Good afternoon champs and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Tando and I am a quant slash data scientist slash actuarial analyst at a bank's insurance division. If you haven't managed to get around to checking out my journey, please check it out. I'm going to link it in the cards right up here. Check it out straight after this video or start there then come here just so that you have better context as to where am I getting the information that I'm speaking to. I'm an intermediate quant and I've been working for about, this is my fifth year. Yeah, this is my fifth year in, in, in the industry. I've worked across asset management, banking and insurance. And I'm excited to share what I learned and that I think fresh graduates can learn. All right, let's get into it. So I made a few notes on what I want to touch on. I want this to be a series, so I'm not gonna go too in depth on anything. Uh, but if there's anything that you really like that you want me to unpack further, please comment down below so that I know that I'm making uh, content for people that are actually going to make use of it and that are actually going to benefit from it. All right. Okay. So number one, apply, 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 apply. I know you've probably heard this, but apply as much as you can and apply early. My thing is you have to actually apply even if you don't want the job because you need to get that experience in, that interview etiquette, that what to expect, that practice, and, and just a general life cycle. You want to know what do I say when there's the telephone interview. You want to know what to say when there's a physical interview. You want to know that your setup is set up correctly for a virtual interview. So apply, even if you're not sure that that's what you want to go into, but also apply really early. Because what I found when, we're, when I was sitting in interviews this year, which is my first time and I'm excited about that, I was sitting in interviews about a month ago and what I realized is that if you don't apply early, then we set up offers. Do you understand what I mean? If a team finds two or three candidates that they like, they send out offers immediately so that they don't lose out to other companies. So if offers are getting sent out around September and you applied around September, then you're at the backlog. You're only going to get an opportunity to get some face time with the managers, i.e. an interview, if the candidates that have offers have you know, declined them. So to put yourself in a better position, as I close off this point, apply to a variety of companies for a variety of roles and apply early. Okay, my next point is in the interview, you have to stress the achievements that you have outside of school. What does this look like in a quant role, right? So one candidate that really impressed me was a gentleman that actually, he was doing his stats honors, uh, oh, his honors in stats, and he has an undergrad in natural science. And he had done his CV in, lat in latex, right, in LaTeX. That was the most beautiful CV I'd ever seen. And I actually said that because my aim is, because I'm, one of the youngest people on the panel. I try and make, I try and make the candidate as comfortable as possible. I try to appear relatable. Uh, that's that's my spot on the panel, right? Because they look at me and they're like, okay, she might have graduated a couple of years ago. You understand what I mean? So I have a better understanding of the culture, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so I said to him, look, this is the most beautiful a CV that you you've ever done. Did you do this in LaTeX? Because I'm aware, I know LaTeX, right? And he had mentioned previously that he that's one of the programming languages he knew um, for his, his stats on this project. That's what they were presenting in. And that is a programming language that he picked up for the stats project. Do you understand? So yes, he's using it for work, but above and beyond that, he literally took himself, he took it upon himself to create a project outside of his work. And he just did his CV in that. And it was absolutely, it was meticulous, right? Another thing is he learned or he taught himself VBA. So when you're interviewing for a quant role or graduate role in the quant space or in the actual analyst space or in the data science space, what you're, what you're actually doing is you're saying, look, I can learn. I have a high learning agility. And how are we going to see that above and beyond your marks? Because you get the degree because you have to get the degree, but what are you doing with your skills outside of that? Are you teaching yourself programming languages aside from the ones that are required at school? And that's important because a lot of banks use SAS and I know a lot of universities don't have the SAS license and it's not open source. So we want, we're trying to figure out, is this person teaching themselves programming outside of the office? 
and of, outside of, of, of school rather and are they going to struggle to pick up the programming language that we use in-house so that's sort of the thinking behind that um, so do projects on the side I understand time is tight etc etc but if you know R um, read a Python tutorial or two do you understand what I mean so that you have some idea so that you have something to speak to in the interview um, another thing your leadership etc etc it's nice to be involved but also we're more interested in the technical skills so it's nice that you're head of this or you're involved in this but for a role in the quant space specifically what i've seen is that we're more interested in has this person picked up things outside of varsity are they self-starter are they do they have high learning agility do they stick to things etc etc that's what we're trying to find okay and then the other thing is read your audience so that's very important some candidates are very jokey which is fine in a certain you know spectrum but you're sitting here with senior quants you're sitting here with managers and some of them just don't gel well with that type of persona and i understand that it's important that you bring out yourself in an interview and because you ultimately want to find a team that's going to the best be the best fit but you have to understand this is a professional environment right you dress professionally for the interview because you're going to a professional interview so it's important yes that you speak a bit about your 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 hobbies etc etc but at the end of the day they're not your friends the managers the, the hiring managers hr they're not your friends so try and keep it professional to some extent yes be relaxed yes it is a to and fro yes it is a conversation but at the end of the day they're basically looking at can we work with this person and if it seems like you're more jokey and less you know can i get the work done then that also sends the kind of message that you don't want to you know convey so just be mindful of that do a few mock interviews with a friend or two and see how you come across um be a bit relaxed yes smile um but i don't think you should initiate jokes yes if you say something and it happens to be funny fine but just just be mindful of the kind of environment and the kind of persona that you want to you know relay to the interview team okay and then another point i want to mention is that it's important to develop a healthy sense or a healthy level of eq which is emotional quotient so i struggle with this i yeah i'm overly confident to some i am not very humble and it's something that I struggle with and that I'm working with continuously. I think I'm great. I think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. And sometimes that doesn't sit well with certain people. And that, you know, sometimes I miss opportunities because of that. And that is just my personality. But I just want to point an example that I really liked from one of the candidates we interviewed. He was asked, um, very sharp guy, he, one of the best graduates that I think I've sat across. He was asked, what do you prefer, what kind of environment do you prefer to work in? Do you prefer an, an environment that is, you know, team-centered, so a collaborative environment, or do you prefer to sit in your corner, work alone, and get things done? And he said, okay, thank you for the question. Um, it depends on the task. I don't think it's either or, because certain tasks require collaboration and other tasks are best fit for a single sitting doing it alone submitting asking for feedback after it's been completed so a lot of things go into that a lot of factors go into that some are time sensitive some needs you know subject matter experts and i would benefit from you know li liaising with them rather than going at it alone etc etc and i absolutely love that question and so did the panel oh sorry his answer so did the panel because it spoke to emotional quotient he knows he's good. He's actually one of the smartest people that I've actually, you know, encountered um, in, in recent years. And he knows that he's smart, but he also understands that sometimes in a team environment, that is not all that matters. So that's what I mean by emotional quotient. I mean, I learned a lot. If I ever move and I get to interview somewhere and I'm asked the very same question, I'm going to copy and paste from what that gentleman said in his response. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna close off that point. Just have a healthy level of EQ and know that there are other things besides how smart you are. Because there are really, there are really a lot of smart candidates that could go through. 
but not all of them have the right fit. So it's very important for you to be, just, just have a healthy balance. People must be able to speak to you, people must be able to correct you uh, because you're coming in as a junior. People must be able, you must be able to look like the kind of person who can take criticism, who can work with others and all those things that you know, foster a collaborative you know, approach. And then I think the last thing I'm just gonna touch on is set up timelines and write down dates. And I tell my mentees this. Um, you have to set up timelines and set up dates, right? Because there's nothing worse than missing a deadline for a, 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 what's an, a, an application that you really wanted to do or missing a call or missing an interview because you're just not you're not you're not you're not balancing things correctly. And yes, we understand you're busy, you're trying to finalize a degree, but a degree is it's, it's very it's not very useful if you can't you know um, convert it to a, a steady job after that. So just be mindful of that. Yes, you're busy, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But take some time, maybe at the first semester or second semester, and just put times on or, or, or timelines on. This is the company I want to apply for. This is the company I want to apply for. This is when they open. This is when this one closes. This is the first round interview typically, and their process is usually this long. And you can find out things like that, right? At your career services, you can find out the timeline usually from people on LinkedIn. So just interact and, and see if also the type of role that you want to apply for, how is that in reality? That you find out by chatting to people who have worked in that company that you just reach out to. I'm assuming everyone who's watching this has LinkedIn because you cannot be realistically searching for a graduate entry role if you don't have the platform. Come on, come on champs. And set up those and then when the offers start rolling in, I'm going to create a separate video on how you handle that because different offers come at different times of the year and, 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 and you don't know, should I accept this one? Should I wait out for this one? How do I say, can I have more time, etc., etc. That is a nice life problem to have, as I said to my mentor earlier this year, but it's also, it can, it can provoke some anxiety because you don't want to leave this and etc. So what I do is I actually create a job matrix based on different factors, which I'll also touch on in the next video, which basically tells me if this one comes through, that's my number one. If this one comes through, that's my number two. So that if number two responds before number one, I wait. But if number three responds before number two, there's no action item. So that's something that just to be mindful of, I'm gonna to touch on in the next video. Like I said, nice life problems when you've got multiple offers. Why? Because you've got a strong degree and you've got a healthy dose of emotional quotient. Um, I'm gonna leave it here. Check out my other videos uh, about my career journey and please share, like, and subscribe. More is coming. I'm out.